Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, dear brothers and sisters, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to this episode in which I want to ask a sincere and honest question, why, why don't you pray? Why don't you pray, my brother and sister? And I'm asking this question to those brothers and sisters who are neglecting their prayers when they know they should be praying. I'm asking this question to the brothers and sisters who have this love to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and have this belief in Allah azza wa jal, but they neglect an important pillar in Islam, which is the salah. My brother and my sister, those who do not pray, do you know that Islam is established on five main foundations and principles? And the second foundation after the shahada, which is Ashadu an la ilaha illallah, Muhammadur Rasulullah, is the salah. Yes, the salah, the prayer. The prayer, why should you neglect the prayer, knowing that the prayer is the only link between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Do not cut off that link between you and Allah azza wa jal. The salah, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Al-ahdu alladhi baynana wa baynahum huwa salah, faman tarakaha, faqad kafar. What's between us and them, ay, the difference between us and them is the salah. And whoever leaves the salah had became one of them, had become a disbeliever. And some of the scholars say, it is the actions of the disbelievers. My Muslim brother and my Muslim sister, why put yourself in that situation? Why put yourself in a situation in which the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam describes of being an action of disbelief? Be from amongst those who pray. Allah azza wa jal calls upon those who believe in Allah, aqeemu salah, perform the prayers, fulfill the rights of the prayers. My brother and my sister, do you know that the first thing that Allah Azza wa Jal will ask you about in the hereafter is the salah, the prayers? The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, the first thing that Allah Azza wa Jal will ask his servants in the hereafter is the salah. If the question of the salah and the servant of Allah passes this first trial and test, then the rest of the actions will succeed and the rest of the actions the servant of Allah will pass. But if you fail in the first question, if you fail in the first judgment, which is the salah, because you did not pray, you neglected the prayers, you did not fulfill the rights of the prayers, you will fail the rest of the questions and you will fail the rest of the judgments. So it's all based about your salah. Look at your salah right now. If you are from amongst those who pray on time, fulfill the rights of the prayers, fulfill the obligations of these prayers, then know that you are on a successful path. But if you're not, then no, you are not on a successful path. Why should you be on an unsuccessful path? Why should you be from amongst those who neglect the prayers? Why neglect the call of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when Allah azza wa jal calls you to stand up for Him five times a day? Do you find that too much? Do you find that too much to stand in front of Allah azza wa jal? Do you find that five prayers a day, each prayer would not even take you more than ten minutes? Do you find that too much to be given to Allah after what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had given you? Did you forget what Allah azza wa jal had given you? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had given you everything. Allah azza wa jal had given you yourself and what's around you. Is it enough? Is it too much? Is it too much that you pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala five times a day? Do you find that not worth it? I ask you to ask yourself a sincere question. An honest question. Does Allah azza wa jal deserve those five prayers or not? You know the answer, yes. And you know that Allah Azza wa Jal deserves more than five prayers. The Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam speaks about a man who worshipped Allah 500 years. He worshipped Allah 500 years. And now he after this man will stand in front of Allah Azza wa Jal, being proud of his worship of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala of 500 years. Then Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala will say to him, O oh my servant, enter the paradise with my mercy. So this servant of Allah will say, Ya Allah, I worshipped you 500 years. I want to enter the paradise with my worships. 
with my good actions, with my good deeds. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will order the scale to come forward. And Allah azza wa jal will put the 500 years of worship on one part of the scale. And then Allah azza wa jal will put one bounty, one bounty from the hundreds and the thousands of bounties of Allah upon us on the other part of the scale, which is the bounty of sight. The bounty of sight, the bounty of these beautiful eyes that Allah had granted us. And you know what happens, my brothers and sisters? The bounty of the sight will be a lot more heavier than 500 years of worship. 500 years of worship was not enough to thank Allah Azza wa Jal for those two beautiful eyes that Allah had granted us. So our five prayers, five daily prayers too much to pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ask yourself this sincere question. Five prayers, are they, are they too heavy for you to pray to Allah? Are you lazy? From praying five prayers to Allah Azza wa Jal, why is it that we find everything else so easy for us to do? It's so easy for us to go and work for eight hours or more. And it's so easy for us to play, to play football or play any kinds of sports for hours or more. It's so easy for us to sit down in a hangout or in a social gathering for hours or more. And we find it very hard to pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala five daily prayers. Five daily prayers, my brothers and sisters. It is your link between you and Allah. It is that form of communication that you communicate between you and your Lord. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, whomever, who, whomever wants Allah azza wa jal to address them, then let them read the Qur'an. And whoever wants to speak to Allah, then let them pray. When the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to go through a devastating moment, when the Prophet alayhi salatu wa sallam used to be sad or upset, he used to call upon Bilal and say, Arihna biha ya Bilal. Oh Bilal, when is that time for the prayer? Call for the prayer. We want to relax. We want to feel comfortable. We want to relax. We want to feel comfortable. Be like the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhum. They will never ever neglect their prayers. They will never ever turn away from their prayers. Allah azza wa jal, he says, فَوَيْلٌ لِلْمُصَلِّينَ الَّذِينَ هُمْ عَنْ صَلَاتِهِمْ سَاهُونَ Woe for those who neglect their prayers, those who pray and neglect their prayers. Do not be from amongst those, my brothers and sisters. So I do ask you another sincere question. Why don't you pray? Why don't you pray when you know that you should be praying? Why don't you pray when you know that the salah is an obligation upon you? Why don't you pray when you know that the prayer is a form of pleasing your Lord? Why don't you pray when you know that when you don't pray, you are displeasing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Allah azza wa jal, he says in the Quran al-Kareem, مَا سَلَكَكُمْ فِي سَقَرْ When people ask the people of the hellfire, why are you in the hellfire? They will say, قَالُوا لَمْ لَكُمْ مِنَ الْمُصَلِّينَ we went from those who used to we went from those who used to pray. We did not pray. We neglected the prayers and therefore Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala casted us in the hellfire. So my brother and my sister, ask yourself this sincere question. Why don't you pray? And I want you to answer yourself, Yes, I must pray, and I must pray from today. May Allah Azza wa Jal make us from those who listen and hear, act upon what they listen and hear. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. نشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت نستغفرك ونتوب إليك